Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our midweek service here at Baytown Revival Center. Glad you're watching with us tonight. Uh, I've got my phone on where I can kind of see who's watching. It's good to see some of you guys, Freddie, Rick, some of the Kaylee and Kristen. Glad to have you with us. I know others will be joining on. We're a little bit early tonight, but we wanted to go ahead and get started. Um, want to just make a couple of announcements and just uh, remind everybody that July 19th, we will be having our services back in, in the building, and uh, that'll be Sunday morning, July 19th, so everybody write that down, make plans to be here, uh, we want to see you in service with us, we will be social distancing, we will be requiring masks, and we will have hand sanitizers uh, placed throughout the building at different places, and um, hopefully we can get back to worshiping God together. This coming Sunday, we'll be live again. Uh, we'll have our worship team with us, and uh, we'll be looking forward to what uh, God has in store for that service. But tonight we're going to pray, and we're going to get back into the book of John. John chapter 1, we're going to begin at verse 35 here in just a few moments. But uh, let's just pray, pray for all those that are sick, all those that have been, again, dealing with the virus. We've got others that we've heard that have caught the virus, and um, we're just praying for speedy recovery, praying for God's healing, God's protection. Praying again for our country, all of our leaders across the nation, and just praying for revival. How many of you know that we need revival? And last year, the beginning of the year, I did a series on We Are Revival. We are the change agent. If anything's going to change, it's got to start with us. And so we need to get us ready so we can change the world. And so let's just pray again for revival. Pray that God will start using us in a great way to make a difference, not only in our church, but also in our community. So if you bow your head and heart tonight, we're going to go ahead and pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, God. God, again, for allowing us to come together, even if it is on just Facebook and the other means that we have, Father, sharing your word. God, I pray, Father, that you touch everyone at home tonight. I pray, God, again, for those that have been sick, Father, that you would just help them to a speedy recovery, Father. I pray, God, that you would touch those that are just going through some major issues, Father, uh, physically, God, that you just touch their body and heal them, Lord. I pray, God, that you would give our leadership and our country direction, God. I pray, Father, that, that people would be able to come together and work together sensibly, Father. God, I pray, Father, that you would just help each one of us, Lord, God, to see revival in our lives, God, so we can be revival. Help us, God, to be the change agent. God, help us to be the one that brings life back to those things that are dying, God, those things, Father, that need to, to be revived again, Father. God, we love you. We praise you. I pray, God, for your anointing tonight, God, as we get into your word. God, touch every heart, touch every life, Father. And God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as you're watching, if you have a prayer request and you feel like putting it on there, put it on there. We'll pray for you. I'm going to be kind of watching as, as we go along and maybe uh, try to keep up with some of those things tonight. But I'm going to begin verse one, uh, uh, chapter 1 of the book of John. Verse 35 is where we're going to begin tonight. And I broke this into two halves uh, last week because I really wanted to focus on Andrew tonight as we get into the second half of the book of John. Verse 35 says, And again the next day John stood and two of his disciples. Now we've got to get this clear. This is John the Baptist that stood and two of his disciples. So he had disciples that followed him similar to what Christ had, and actually some of John's disciples are going to become Christ's disciples here in just a moment as we go through this. But we find that John stood, and two of his disciples, and one of those disciples is Andrew, and I'm going to focus on him a little bit more than any part of this second half, and also believed to be the other John. Uh, not John the Baptist, but the other John. And so we find here in verse 36, And looking upon Jesus, they saw Jesus, and this is referring back to verse 29, they saw Jesus as he walked, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, verse 37, and the two disciples, again talking about Andrew and John, two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Something compelled them to begin to follow Jesus, and we're going to find out, a little bit about why they began to follow Jesus, but they followed Jesus. Something brought them to that place where they decided they were going to follow Jesus. And as a, a man and woman sitting out there and listening tonight, many of you have made that decision to follow Jesus, to follow Christ, and that's why you call yourself a Christian. You've made that determination in your mind and in your heart, and you're doing that. 
And that's what we need more of. We need more disciples of Christ. We need more Christians. We need more born-again people to accept Christ. Because if we can get more people to accept Christ, believe me, it will change the atmosphere in what we live in today. So we find here that these two disciples began to follow Jesus. Let's go to verse 38. And Jesus turned and saw them following, and he said to them, What do you seek? In other words, why are you following me? What are you trying to see? What do you really want? And uh, we find here that, that, that they're fixing to receive an answer. But he says, why do you seek? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where do you dwell? So they begin to ask the question, where do you dwell? And he said unto them, come and see. In other words, follow me. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. It was about the tenth hour, 10 a.m. if you go by the Roman clock, 4 p.m. if you go by the Jewish clock. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. And I want to point out, it says, was Andrew Simon Peter's brother? Now I want to pause here for just a moment because I want to talk about Andrew. Notice that Andrew's title as mentioned here was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. How many of you have ever been referred to as, hey, this is, this is uh, so-and-so, so-and-so's friend. This is uh, Matt, Rachel's brother. Uh, sometimes our identity is connected to somebody else. Maybe it's an older brother, maybe an older sister, a, a sibling. Uh, I, I know sometimes I get introduced as, as uh, you know, Sister Catherine's husband. Uh, sometimes she gets more credit than I do. And a lot of times that's what happens to us. We get known by who we are associated with or who we're related to, maybe because that person has a little bit more popularity. Maybe that person uh, has done greater things. And, and so sometimes we get associated uh, with that person based off of their reputation more so than our reputation. And I began to do some research on Andrew and I found out a couple of things I want to share with you tonight, that Andrew was basically known as the first disciple of Christ. Yes, he was John's disciple, but he decided to follow Christ, and John went with him. Uh, he was born between 5 A.D. and 10 A.D. in the Middle East, where Palestine is now, uh, where, where, where now we know as Palestine, specifically in Bethsaida, a village of the Sea of Galilee. So, so we know that he was born in that area, and um, he was a dedicated, and this is something we need to keep in mind. Although he may not be as mentioned as much, and he may be identified as, as Peter's brother, uh, he preached about Christ, and um, he shared the gospel. But what's really iconic about him is he's the one that went and got his brother, Peter, and brought him to the Lord, and we're going to see that in just a moment. But Andrew is not mentioned a whole lot in the Bible. He's only mentioned about 13 times in the Bible, where Peter's mentioned a lot more. And uh, we all know about Peter. You talk about Peter. You talk about Peter walking on the water. You're talking about, you know, Jesus telling him that, that he was Petros, that he was a, a part of the rock. He asked, he, uh, Jesus asked him, says, you know, who, who do men say that I am? We also know that Peter was there many, many times when miracles were performed. And we know that Peter cut off a soldier's ear. We, we know that Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and he began to preach the gospel and people were saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. We know that Peter's done a lot of things. But what about Andrew? And see, what I want to get across tonight as we go through this is some people that are watching this right now, some of you I know that's watching this right now, you sometimes feel insignificant compared to other people. You think, man, man, we got this person, they preach it on Sunday morning when pastor's not there. We got this person that's, that's teaching this class. We got this person that sings, and we got this person that does that. And you're always comparing yourself to what other people do. But I want to tell you something. No matter what you do, it is not insignificant to God. It matters. It matters. Every little thing you do counts. It may not be as much as somebody else, but what you do does have an impact. It does matter. See, think about the gospel without Andrew. Think about what would happen back in those days if there was no Andrew. 
If there was no Andrew that heard the gospel of John the Baptist, I mean, heard John the Baptist preaching the gospel about Jesus, if Andrew was not one of John the Baptist's, uh, John the Baptist's uh, disciples, He wouldn't already have that seed planted in his life. He wouldn't have recognized who Jesus was. He would not have followed Jesus. And he surely wouldn't have went and got his brother to follow him because he wouldn't know him himself. So here's the key. We need to get back to at least being Andrews. Andrews. What do you mean, Pastor? What I mean is one that goes and gets someone else and tells them about Jesus. So we find here that Andrew is following Jesus. But he's called Simon Peter's brother. And he, verse 41, Andrew, first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. So notice what he's doing. He's going to his brother quickly. He says, Man, we have found the Messiah. We have found him. He lives among us. See, there's something inside of Andrew that stirred up. Something inside of Andrew that says, you know what? I'm going to go get my brother. I'm going to tell somebody that Jesus has been found. The Messiah is here. And so he goes and he says, we found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. We have found him. And verse 42 says, and he brought him to Jesus. Now I want to pause for a second. When's the last time you brought somebody to Jesus? I would say church because I I know the answer to that. It's been a long time since some of y'all brought somebody to church. And if it's been that long since you brought somebody to church, I imagine it's been even longer since you invited someone to get to know Christ. Woo! Yes, I said that. Listen to me. If you're excited about it, you ought to show it. If you're grateful for what the Lord's done in your life, you ought to tell somebody else so they can experience the same thing that you have. we got to get back to ministering and discipling and encouraging and bringing people back to the Lord. We live in a society right now that is still trying to shame the church, trying to, to guilt you, trying to be outrageous out there so you don't speak about Christ publicly. But we got to tell others about Jesus. He went and he got him, brought him to Jesus. Verse 42, and when Jesus beheld him, who's he talking about? He's talking about Peter. He said, said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee. And he moves forward. But before I go forward to verse 43 and continue on, I just want to kind of reiterate a couple of things because I want us to get this. Jesus speaks a word over Peter. But if it wasn't for Andrew, Peter wouldn't be there. And I want to ask you this question before I get into the rest of the Bible teaching about some of the others that are called. Is who would be missing... If you wasn't there. In other words, who have you led to Christ? Who have you invited to a church service? Who have you shared the gospel with? See, we we celebrate in church worshiping God. We magnify Him. We lift our hands and we sing songs in His sanctuary. We get excited sometimes and we have a great time in here, but how many of us wait when we get outside the door and we're not so excited anymore and we're not lifting our hands and we're not sharing the good things that God's done for us, we got to get back to that place to where we're inviting again people to meet Jesus. Because, yes, you may only reach one or two, but that one or two may reach thousands of people that you never reach. I once heard a message on the power of one. Sometimes it just takes one to do one thing that will make a difference in someone else's life that that someone else will reach thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You never know who you're reaching. So I challenge you just to reach one. So let's move on just a little bit further. We're going to get off Andrew and we're going to talk about some of the other things that's happening in this chapter. 
But it goes on to say the next day, verse 43, the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and he found, found Philip and said to him, follow me. So here he is calling one out. He says, follow me. He says, now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So he's from the same region that Andrew and Peter is in. Verse 45 says, Philip found Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses, who Moses in the law and the prophets did write. So here is Philip going and getting Nathanael, just kind of like Andrew went and got Peter. So this is contagious. We see, we see a trend. We see the excitement. We say, hey, this is what's going on. When's the last time you've been excited about church, about Jesus, that you went and told someone what was going on? He says, we found Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? Now, I want to stop for just a moment right there and kind of explain that statement. So here is Nathanael saying, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It'd almost be like saying, can anything good come out of Baytown? Or out of Houston? Or out of Dayton? Is there anything good there? Notice his remark. His remark was uh, really not uh, politically correct today. His remark was kind of degrading. But that's what he said. Philip said to him, well, won't you come and see? Nathaniel, won't you come and see? Since you got that, I do come and see. Verse 48, Nathaniel said to him, from, him, from where do you know me? Hang on, I, I missed the whole verse there. I'm sorry, let me back up. I got excited. Verse 47, so they come, they saw Jesus. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him. And said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. So Jesus makes a comment to him. You know, Jesus already knew his attitude, already knew who Nathaniel was. He already knew, uh, you know, his kind of like self righteousness, you might say. So he says, Behold, an Israelite indeed, who has no guile. So he kind of makes this, this, this remark. And Nathaniel said in him, From where do you know me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now, you've got to understand that Jesus is telling him, I seen you under the fig tree before Philip ever told you to come and see me. Now this is getting to Nathaniel because Nathaniel's realizing, Hey, this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. This is... Jesus, who everybody speaks of, and he is coming from Nazareth. So Nathaniel, verse 49, answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Notice immediately how things change. So this is what's happening in, in chapter 1 at this part. Disciples are being called. People are recognizing who Jesus is. People are seeing this. And, and Andrew, so excited about it, he's telling others and Philip's telling others. And people are starting to follow along and hear about Jesus and recognizing who he is. You know, it's been a long time since we've had a revival of souls, a revival of people walking through the church doors. It's not just our church, but other church doors. Most people will walk through a church door if they're invited to an event or if to a small group or to, to whatever. And I know that ministries changed a lot over the years and different things happened. But when's the last time that we got so excited about what Jesus is doing in our life that we go outside these doors and we tell somebody about Jesus and say, man, you want to see what's happening at my church. It's been a while. But we want to invite them to coffee and donuts and a fellowship with meal and get them comfortable and all this. You didn't see none of that happening back then. What got them intrigued about Jesus? how people were responding to the gospel of Christ and responding to his presence. Man, we got to get back to responding to the Lord's presence. Get back to getting that excitement. I'm all for programs and I'm all for, I like my fair share of coffee. I don't eat donuts anymore. 
But I'm telling you, what makes a difference in our life is not just the fellowship. It's the fellowship. Having Jesus in our life. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto you, I saw you under the fig tree. That causes you to believe. Now I want to, I want to pause right here for, for a quick second because it's important to understand a couple of things. Sometimes people need a sign. Sometimes people are looking for something that says, Oh, this is, this is the Lord. And if the Lord permits me, I'm going to be preaching about a sign Sunday morning. Just buckle your seatbelt. But this one thing that Jesus said to him, I saw you under the fig tree, spoke volumes to Nathaniel, and it stirred his faith to the point where he realized and said, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said to him, because of this, you shall see greater things than these. My Lord, I could slap the pulpit and almost holler and scream right now. What's it going to take for us to get to the point to where we believe the word of God to the point where we're willing to admit that, hey, Jesus is the Son of God, and the Lord speaks to us and says, because of your faith and because of your belief, you're going to see some greater things. I don't know about you guys, but I want to see greater things. I want to see miraculous things. I want to see things that's beyond my own comprehension and my own imagination. But the only way to do that is get to a place where my faith and my spirit is stirred to where I'm seeking the Lord and recognizing His power, His authority in my life. He says, you're going to see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. He said, you're going to see some things. <laughs> you know what? I, I, think, I think we live in a time where we get things wrong. Well, I know we get things wrong. I think sometimes we invite people to church and man, you need to come see this. Man, we got we got we got new screens. Oh, we got new videos. We got we got new this and new that. Man, that's awesome. It's great. I love new stuff. But I'm talking about things, and Jesus was talking about things. It's not the same things we seek. See, I'm ready to see some things. I'm ready to see people healed. I'm ready to see some demons cast out. I still believe in that. I'm ready to see some lives changed. I'm ready to see some things that are dead come to life again. I'm ready to see some things unfold that's going to blow our mind because it's been a while since we've seen some of those things. But the only way we're going to get back to seeing some of those things is to change our expectation and, ex and change our perception. Our perception should be as Andrew. Let's seek it. Let's seek it. Let's tell others about it. What are we telling them about? We're just telling them that Jesus is now. We're not just telling them Jesus is coming. We're telling them that Jesus is here and that Jesus is changing lives. Come and see his miracles. Come and participate in the healings. Come and worship God. Come and be a part of the body of Christ and let God resurrect you and change your life see that's powerful it's powerful he said you're going to see some things and I can't wait to see what God has in store so at the conclusion of this this chapter what's my point well I got many of them but I'm just going to share a couple of them <laughs> Be an Andrew. Sometimes you say, I, I'm not significant. I, I, I don't do much in the church. I don't get no roses. I don't get any glory. Listen, Andrew wasn't seeking glory. 
All Andrew was doing was sharing his excitement because he found the Messiah. He said, I found Jesus. Peter, guess what? I found Jesus. Peter's mentioned over and over in the Bible. He's even got some letters that he's wrote in the Bible. He's got a whole lot of stuff in the Bible about him, but Andrew is only mentioned about 13 times, and it's mentioned that Andrew is Simon Peter's brother. You may not get your name on the marquee. You may never have any great significant achievement where you write a book or do whatever. But if you bring one to Christ because you're excited about what the Lord's doing in your life, guess what? You've done volumes. You've done volumes. Second point tonight is let's get that fervency back in our spirit where we're excited to invite people to our church. Not because... We have the same stuff going on as far as pews and carpet and this. But because Jesus is doing something in your heart and your life. It's, God, man, you need to come to church. You need to come meet Jesus. You need to hear the word of God. You need to worship with us because we worship in spirit and truth. The Holy Spirit moves in our services and God will speak to you. God will touch your life. We've got to get that fervency about us again. Amen. So in closing... I challenge you, be an Andrew. Be an Andrew. Get a determination to tell somebody about Jesus Christ this week. It's Wednesday night. You got a few more days before Sunday. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Who knows? You might win somebody to the Lord. You might win a Peter. You might... Tell somebody that will reach thousands of people. But how will you ever know if you never invite, you never encourage, you never lift up, you never declare that you're a Christian and that Jesus rules and reigns in your life? So I close with that tonight. Thank you for watching. Those that's commenting, thank you for commenting. Samantha and Daryl, it's good to have you on with us tonight. Freddie, Sister Bobby, all those that I've seen that have been on and off, it's good to have you with us. We're going to close in prayer. Father, I pray, God, that you help us, Lord God, to be an Andrew. God, to be witnesses, to be leaders, God, to tell others about Christ, Lord. God, to stir the revival, Lord. God, help us, Lord, not to hold on to what we have, but to share what we have, God, to tell others about the good news, Lord. I pray, God, as we go forth and we witness and we testify, Lord, God, that you would lead us to lost souls, God. And as we are led to lost souls, I pray, God, that you lead us to a Peter. God, that you lead us to somebody, Father, like Nathaniel, God, and someone that needs to hear your word, somebody that's ready to receive your word. God, somebody, God, that will take that word and let it grow in their heart and their life and will reach others, God. God, we know that's how we grow the church is by winning souls to the kingdom, God. And Father, I pray that you help us be soul winners tonight, Father. God, touch every heart, every life that's watched. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you glory tonight in Jesus' name. Again, be with us Sunday morning online. We are going to have some uh, a great service. Uh, we will have our worship team with us, hopefully. And they'll be doing worship, and I will be preaching the message. And uh, I know a lot of people are looking for a sign, but I'm going to tell you something. God is looking for a sign. And I'm going to talk about the sign that God's looking for this Sunday. We love you. God bless you. Take care. Have a good night. In Jesus' name, amen.